album, When the Sun Goes Down, is out today in stores and is already top five on iTunes. Her new movie, Monte Carlo, co-starring Leighton Meester and Katie Cassidy, is out this Friday. Selena, thank you so much for being here. You are a very busy girl. <laughs> thank you. We had over 50,000 questions from your fans come in. And so let's just get started with them. I won't make you answer all of them, I promise. <laughs> no worries. So the first question is from Lovesick. What do you like most about your job? Um, I think, I mean, I love doing what, I love being able to do what I love, which is obviously acting and singing. So waking up every day and being able to tour or do concerts or be on a set is what I love to do. And obviously my fans make it the best job in the whole world because I get to do it for them and because of them. And they obviously love you back because that's a lot of questions to <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, from Big Time Cell Fan, what song by another artist do you find inspirational? Oh, um, I really like Firework by Katy Perry. I think it's a very strong song with lyric content, and obviously the video that she put together was really sweet. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I guess, like, inspirational, I guess different ones have inspiration for me. Like, I love Count on Me by Bruno Mars, which is mm -hmm. such a sweet song, and I... I think of my cousin when it comes to that song, because it's like a friendship song. It's really sweet. Alexis Golden asks, you're about to be 19. What does that mean to you? Do you feel older? Do you act any older? Uh, no, I think it just gets scarier and scarier, because you're like, you're turning another year older, older, and older. But I don't really, um, I don't celebrate my birthday, so I, I actually will be on tour. I'll be doing a concert on my birthday, which I'm excited about, because I get to spend it with my family. No celebration, no cake, nothing. Well, maybe a dinner with dinner, friends. Dinner's <laughs> good. So Logan asks, what was the best part about filming the movie Monte Carlo? Uh, the cast and the locations. We got to shoot in beautiful places like Monte Carlo and Paris and Budapest. And, and I could not have been luckier to spend that time with Katie and Leighton because they were just the best girls. And you can really see our chemistry on screen because we were experiencing all of these places for the first time on screen as mm -hmm. well in real life so it was really fun it looks like a really fun movie yeah. mill and bess 06 ask what is something in life you can't live without my phone because i travel so much that i would i wouldn't know what to do if i couldn't have that you know texting and calling people that i love because that's everything to me and tweeting and tweeting and facebook all of it is on my phone for sure Jazz18624 asks, as an actress, you've always played the lovely protagonist. Could you ever see yourself playing a villain? Well, I do in Monte Carlo, which is what I think is really fun about the movie is because I do get to play the character that's nice and sweet and, and wants to be a good person. And then I also play Cordelia in the movie where she's just an evil British heiress and she's got attitude and it's really fun. It was a great role for me to play because it was so different from the things that I played before. And I think everybody will be surprised. And you get to play two roles in one. I do. AJ Chick asks, if you could do a duet with any artist, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Uh, I would love to go see Ella Fitzgerald sing. That would be amazing. And I would like to do a duet with Bruno Mars. Erica Joyce asks, do you and Demi still talk? I miss y'all. Oh, yes we do. I do. I do talk to her. I actually just talked to her yesterday. <laughs> Ira asks, I love your ask, your acting. Are you planning to star in a movie after Monte Carlo? Uh, hopefully. I mean, that's that would be the ultimate dream for me. I mean, I, I want to, after my show has ended, I, I would definitely want to transition into doing more film. Simply S fans, what was your favorite part about recording your new album, When the Sun Goes Down? Um, I think the music was really fun, because this whole record is a lot different than um, both of my the the two that I've already put out like they're just this music the music is stronger the lyrics are cheeky and I get to be a little sassy in, the, in some of the songs which is fun for me and the album artwork was really fun so everything was really creative with this album and you can really see that there's a difference which I like you feel like this album lets you grow more as an artist yeah absolutely I think that this content is more appealing to other audiences Ariana Grand asks who were your role models or inspirations growing up um to be honest, I was obsessed with Hilary Duff because of Liz McGuire, so she was like a huge influence on me growing up. I loved Britney Spears. She was the first CD that I ever bought and the first concert I actually ever went to, so probably that generation. I was in the pop world a lot. 
I read somewhere that your name is after the singer Selena. Yeah, Selena Quintanilla. I was named yeah. after Tejano Singer. That's great. Mm -hmm. Coniara788 asks, I have a problem. I'm afraid of performing before an audience. How do you deal with it? That's a good question. It is a good question. I, I get awkward a lot. Sometimes I don't really know what to do on stage. Fortunate, f fortunate for me, I am able to do it in front of my fans, and I feel very safe with my fans. But at the same time, you have to learn to laugh at yourself. I, um, I was on stage one time, and I forgot the lyrics to my song, Naturally which is one of my biggest songs. And I completely got the lyrics wrong in the first verse right when we started the song, when everybody was excited. So I stopped and I laughed and I was like, I'm sorry, y'all, we're going to have to do it again. And they all laughed with me. And then I feel like if you just allow yourself to be free, people are going to accept you more. They would much rather see you mess up than try to be perfect if you're not perfect. So I kind of feel like that's the lesson I've learned. That's good advice. Some LA Love asks, how do you deal with fame and lack of privacy at your age? Um, it's a weird kind of, it's a weird lifestyle for sure. Obviously when you have people that are interested and then you have like older guys like following you with cameras, it's all, it's really awkward, all of it is. But I just, I try to, to stay as normal as possible. I just try to ignore it. I usually put my head down and just keep walking. But I don't get bothered as much and just, I get to kind of have a good balance of both, I think. Is that something that's come along as you've become experienced, that you're more okay with it? Uh, I don't think I'll ever be okay with it, but I've had to accept it more. Understandable. Alex Russo asks, why did you decide to go with so many different styles on When the Sun Goes Down? Because I wanted to do something different. I feel like my first album was a picture of my face and a, and a dress. My second album was a picture of my face and a pretty dress. And my mom, and I guess, came up with this amazing concept of doing tributes to different eras in music. So half the photos I don't even look like myself or would never wear the things that I put on in the album artwork. But that was just to kind of show um, a sense of diversity, I guess. The album artwork and the cover is like in a black wig and it's like a 20s kind of vibe. And then I have a, like a 30 or a 30s vibe, a 50s, 70s, we do 80s. So we kind of do all of different kind of styles just to show the difference, I think. That's really cool. It's a cool idea. Twinkle and co-owners asks, what would you, wa would you walk on the moon given the chance? Why, why not? I mean, that would be amazing. <laughs> I'd probably be terrified to be outside of the earth, but it'd be fun. Yeah, I think I would too. Gomez Fanatic asks, what was the hardest decision you ever had to make? Uh, probably leaving Texas. I was going to move to LA when I was 14 with my mom and I was leaving everything behind. I was leaving my grandparents, my dad, my friends, everything. And it was really hard for me um, and it was it was a weird time for me in general but I just I guess I just um, had to do it thank you well I'm sure that that was a really hard transition to make do it you, was but it was good <laughs> do you still get to visit yeah yeah I do I definitely visit it got a lot easier I still miss home a lot but um, I do get to see them as much as I can that's great Ashley TT 10 11 01 asks Who's the one person in your life you can tell anything to? Uh, there's probably three people, um, like three of my girlfriends that I could tell anything to. So one of them is um, my cousin back home. Uh, one is my friend Ashley, and the other would be Taylor. So I feel like those are the three people I can tell absolutely anything to. Do you get to see them a lot or talk to them still? I do. Uh, actually, Ashley works with me now. So oh, I great. have, I'm working with one of my best friends and my cousin flies out on tour a lot and I try to go see Taylor a lot too. Buttercup12379 asks, what would your life be like if you were not famous? I'd probably, I'd actually really want to go to culinary school. I'd love to learn how to bake and cook and have like my own little bakery back in Texas is probably what my huge dream would be. I mean, it's still one of my dreams.
are your first emotions? Oh, gosh. Um, I was like, is anybody going to buy my album? I was nervous. I probably... It was weird because I, I didn't really... I wasn't really familiar with music because mm -hmm. I... I'd always, I'd always wanted to put her out a record. I loved music, but I just didn't know what kind of music I wanted to do. So my first album was kind of all over the place. Um, and I just remember thinking how unsure I was about the whole thing. I was just unsure that it was going to do well, unsure that my tours would do well, and it was just a, it was a really nervous time for me. But I do remember going to the store and picking up a copy myself for the first time and seeing that all of them were sold out but two, so... That was a good feeling. And obviously now this album's doing great. It's already top five on I iTunes. Oh, thank you, guys. I hope yep, you guys like the album. Out there. I know. I hope you guys like it. I listened to it yesterday on your Facebook page. It's great. Yes, thank you. Great. Michael C. asks, can you compare what your tour will be like compared to previous tours? How big of a production is it this time? Well, if you've gone to any of my shows before, they're pretty basic. It's me in a sparkly dress just jumping up and down on singing my songs. <laughs> so with this one, I was able to have a lot of creative control, which was fun. I am going to have a production. I'm going to have a stage. I'm going to have wardrobe changes. I'm going to have dancers. So I think my fans are going to be surprised to see me doing something completely different. Is there any song that you'd like to start with? Uh, we, we are coming up with a set list right now, so I am kind of contemplating on which one we're going to open with, but, uh, I am performing a lot from the new record, which I'm excited okay. about. Love Selena G asks, what is one thing you regret? I don't regret anything. Um, just because I feel like even if it was the worst feeling or the worst thing ever, it happened for a reason and it obviously made me the person I am. So everything happens for a reason. Again, very wise, very <laughs> wise. And the last question I have here is from Mrs. Bieber 097. Nice. <laughs> very nice. And they, she asks, when you have time off, what's your favorite thing to do? Sleep. I <laughs> love to sleep and watch movies. Like, I could go to the movies all day and, like, eat pasta. Like, that's what my day off would be. Or something outside, like the beach. I like doing things that are very relaxing and does not require a lot of movement. <laughs> and have you seen your movie I have. I went to the screening of Monte Carlo, and I got to see it with a bunch of my fans, which was awesome because I got to hear them laugh and got to see them like get emotional. It was really, it was really sweet. Wow. Was it was it a little nerve wracking to see? Yeah, because I was sitting here like, oh my gosh, I hope people <laughs> laugh because I knew what was coming. So I was a little nervous the entire time, but it was great. And it turned out how you thought it would. It did, and I think better. I'm really proud of it. So I hope everybody goes out and watches it. Do you have any upcoming plans for movies? or? Um, as far as film, I mean, we're still in the whole boring development thing and figuring out what's next. I think right now we're just focusing on tour and getting that, getting that ready and set to go. So you're in New York today. Where are you off to next? I'll be doing more fun interviews. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll be doing. But this is the best because I get to obviously talk to my fans. Yeah, and they certainly wanted to talk to you. Yay! So, thank you very much for coming by. I really appreciate it. And I know you're super busy. And everybody, go buy the album. It's out right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go see the and movie. Thank you for sending in questions. You know how much I love you guys. And I really hope you enjoy the album. And Monte Carlo, love you guys. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. I guess this <laughs>